Member for North Sydney. Thank you very much, Mr Speaker. Mr Speaker, uh, last night I heard a member of the Labor Party describe this budget as a traditional Labor budget. You betcha. You betcha. And I thought how true that is. Yes. Big deficit, big debt, more people unemployed. This is the Labor way. This is the Labor way. It's like Groundhog Day in this place, Mr Speaker. The Labor Party comes in and Australia heads towards recession. The Labor Party comes in and we reach record levels of deficit and debt. The Labor Party comes in and spins fiscal responsibility, and yet they have become the biggest spending government in modern Australian history. And, Mr Speaker, there is a lesson here. You always have to look at what Labor does and not what they say. For months now, the Labor Party has been telling us that the decimation of the budget, the massive debt that is being accrued as a result of significant deficits, is all caused by the collapse in revenue. And yet, when you have a good look at the budget papers, you can identify this. Finally, the truth emerges during the lockup that the Labor Party, through its unbelievable expenditure since the Rudd government was elected, has become the biggest spending government since World War II, and that of the $188 billion of net debt, two-thirds of that two-thirds of that $188 billion is directly linked to new spending initiatives by the Rudd government. Not just new spending initiatives, but reckless spending initiatives. Reckless spending initiatives that not only blew the proceeds of the last mining boom, but have sought to spend all the proceeds of the next mining boom. Mr Speaker, this is reckless fiscal management. It is an assault on the public finances on Australia that we have not seen in generations. And they have done it willfully. They have done it without any care for the future. And on each day that they come into this place and lecture us, lecture us, the Liberals and the Nationals, when they lecture us about fiscal responsibility, I want everyone to remember that in 1996, when the coalition was last elected into government, we inherited a debt of $96 billion. We inherited a $10 billion black hole. We were left with nothing in the Cabinet, and we had to make hard decisions to repair Labor's mismanagement. No, damn hard decisions. I was elected in 1997. 1996. And I tell you what, Madam Deputy Speaker, there was hardly a government service left in my electorate in North Sydney after that budget. And it was a budget that had to be done by the, tre the former Treasurer up there, the member for Higgins, who had to make the hard decisions. And let us remind Australians of the record that the Labor Party opposed us on every single decision, every single decision, root and branch that would get the budget back into surplus and that would pay off Labor's $96 billion debt. And the more I hear these sanctimonious fools lecturing us about responsible opposition, I reflect on the fact that when they left us with $96 billion of debt, when they left us with a black hole of $10 billion, they voted against all the tough initiatives such as the reform of higher education, a tough initiative, such as the PBS reform, a damn hard initiative, changes to the disability pension, hex increases. They voted against privatisation not once, but on a number of occasions over the whole 11 years. They voted against the super surcharge levy, and then they voted to try and keep it. Some years later, they voted against the closing down of Working Nation, Working Nation, where they fiddled the figures about what the real impact was of the Keating budget. And when it came to structural reform, 
the stuff that lays the foundations, the important stuff, the important initiatives that actually make a difference to the fabric of the nation. Tax reform. How hard was that? I remember sitting in this house day after day, day after day, arguing with the then Shadow Treasurer, Simon Crean, as they were tearing apart the hardest structural initiative in modern times. Major tax reform, and they voted against it. Even though we won an election with a mandate, they voted against it. Even though every election we sought a mandate and we won a mandate on privatisation, they voted against it. And even today, how ironic it was. The Minister for Small Business coming to the dispatch box and saying, we have fixed the R&D tax concession. The Coalition reduced it from 150 per cent to 125 per cent, but good news Australia, it's back at 150 per cent. You know why we reduced it? Because we ran out of money. You know why we ran out of money? Because of Labor. Labor had spent every dollar in the can and, what's more, they had hocked the future. And you know what? We are back in government today, back in a situation today where the Labor Party is back in government and what happens? Groundhog Day. It all happens again. They not only spend the money that was there, but they actually, they actually spend all of tomorrow's money as well. Madam Deputy Speaker. I think it is the first time in my recollection that a Treasurer actually stood up to deliver a budget speech and didn't tell us what the budget was. <laughs> I cannot recall, and in fact a number of members of this House and outsiders actually could not recall a situation where the Treasurer did not have the courage to come into this place, didn't have the courage to come into this place and give a fair income assessment of the real impact of the budget. Mm. 